Hi, my name is Evie and welcome to my channel. If you're into the hipster aesthetic, you've probably heard of phrenology. The word phrenology comes from the Greek word phren, which means mind, and logos, which means knowledge. So phrenology is knowledge of the mind. It all began around the start of the 1800s with German neuroanatomist and psychologist Franz Joseph Gall. Gall wrote extensively on the idea that the shape of someone's brain and therefore their skull and their whole head can determine a lot about their mind, their personality, their intelligence, and disposition. He called this cranioscopy or observing the skull. It was a colleague of his that popularized Franz Gall's work under the term phrenology. Here's how phrenology works, the rules of the road. Step number one, the brain is the organ of the mind, so where our thoughts reside and come from. The brain is not one continuous organ that is the same throughout, but rather it's made up of several different organs, uh, all with different functions that aggregate together in your head. These different organs are located in different places around your head. You can map it out and each location has a different function. Having a larger brain area for a quality like cautiousness or benevolence meant that you were superior in those personality traits or qualities. Since the skull forms around the brain during development, according to phrenology, you can feel around the skull to determine these inner mental qualities. So that's a pretty big claim and the public loved it. Remember, this is the Victorian era and scientific knowledge was important and an indication of sophistication and modernity. At this time, scientific lectures were actually becoming popular as a form of entertainment. It was the perfect time for phrenology to spread like wildfire. It became such a respected field that Queen Victoria herself invited a renowned phrenologist to read the heads of her children. Traditionally, the mind had been studied primarily through introspection, which meant looking inward and thinking about your own thoughts and feelings. Phrenology was so attractive because it had a biological basis. You could use anatomy, something physical and concrete, to describe something abstract like the mind. And that was awesome. Unfortunately, it was also wrong. Phrenology has since been discredited as more and more evidence emerged against it. First of all, phrenologists couldn't agree on how many of these mental organs there were in the brain. Are there 27, 40, who knows? Studies of brain lesions also showed that loss of a certain section of the brain didn't lead to the expected loss of function. As well, modern brain imaging shows that certain personality traits can't be pinpointed to certain areas of the brain. For years, renowned doctors and psychologists were wrong. But remember that science is a process, and mistakes aren't just a waste of time, there's something we can learn from. Phrenology inspired scientists to learn more about the brain and nervous system, and the idea that different brain regions have different functions does come back in modern neuroscience. Phrenology was an important part of history, but today it's no more than pseudoscience. But hey, it makes for a pretty nice poster. So next time you check out some hipster decor, just remember that science is everywhere.